Hey guys, it's Darius Komodo Dragon Jesus Vita here for Poker VIP. I'm making what I guess is the second video in my little series here on 888. We're playing 100 No Limit Snap Tables. Uh, as usual, it's going to be a live play video, and we're going to get right into it. Here we go. So we start out with pocket fives in the big blind. Uh, that's going to be a defend against a 3x raise. Uh, okay, nice, nice start. No complaints there. I'm going to be starting this one off with a check raise. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to go to about $11 here. And I definitely want to go with the check raise on this board texture because uh, there's a lot of really crummy turns that kill all the action. And when I get 3 bet to 26.50, I'm just going to jam here. Uh, he shouldn't have too many straights in his range. So as long as we're not up against pocket sixes, we're doing incredibly well. Uh, up against the nut flush draw, flush gets there on the turn. Okay, so a little bit of a rough start to the video. Nine six, that's going to be a fold. And I guess the player pool on 888 isn't the biggest right now. So we'll occasionally have a few seconds between hands on each of these tables. Uh, hopefully it shouldn't uh, leave too much downtime. Uh, I get a raise from a tight player, pocket threes, just like the fives, it's going to be defend. Uh, we're not going to hit a set this time, and it's very likely just going to be a fold on the flop facing a c-bet. Buck fours in the small blind. Uh, I don't think it's going to be profitable calling. Uh, even though the, the opening raise size was fairly small. And I didn't want to 3-bet uh, the pair of 4s up against uh, the middle position player. So just going with the fold, uh, which I'll be doing with you know all my really, really low pairs there. Okay, so a short stacked player decides to open raise Gustavo. Uh, starts out with a three bet. I do believe I'm going to go for the cold four bet here. We're going to go to 18. Uh, definitely stacking off against the short stacked player. Uh, against the reg, I guess it's a lot closer uh, from these positions. Yeah, I, I think we can give him credit for stacking off wider than just aces and kings, so I'd probably have to call it off. Uh, this is not a particularly good board if you consider that his continuing range preflop will be fairly tight. Uh, anytime it includes broadways, that's pretty much always going to be the higher broadways, uh, which are going to basically all include queens. Uh, you know, rather than, I guess maybe we'll see Jack-10 sometimes. Uh, but I think it's just less, less likely. Uh, there's, of course, Ace-Queen, and any pair won't fold to one bet on this board. Uh, so I have the option to basically commit to multiple streets of betting, or just try to take my showdown value with Ace-King-High, and that's what I've chosen to do. It'll be interesting if he throws in a bet. Uh, it's a spot where I could call, but I also think my hand is extraordinarily face up and he can just basically value bet anything, uh, meaning any pair. And the hands that 
I don't know that there are too many hands that would want to bluff here. I guess if he shows up with something like a king jack suited or maybe an ace jack thinking that it doesn't quite have enough showdown value. I, I think overall uh, a fold is just going to be better. I decided to flat ace king against the under the gun rays from Call Me Dully over here. Uh, he see bets this flop, and I'm going to start off the call. Uh, the turn is wonderful for me, giving me two pair. Um, also, I think it's a turn I'm going to get barreled on a lot, uh, if call, especially if Call Me Dully assumes that I'll be three betting all my ace kings. Uh, and I'm just going to continue by calling, and I will call. Uh, literally any river and with the ace four I will be starting out uh, with the bet with my gut shot uh, when call me Dolly goes for a check uh, it's very like unlikely that I'm behind here it is a little bit of an over bet if I want to shove Uh, so I'm wondering if I want to actually shove or just throw in a uh, kind of medium-sized bet of maybe 40-something dollars. And I think I'm going to take that, that second option. Let's go 42-40 here. And he goes for the snap check call with ace-king. Interesting that he doesn't go for three streets of value there. I guess he's giving me the opportunity to bluff. Or thinks that if he triple barrels, I'll really only be get calling with, uh, say, sets of five, or sorry, fours and eights, which I believe were on that board. But on that ace queen, I think there's a lot of value in him just betting it because I'm going to have so many ace queens. Uh, all right, ace kings everywhere. Phase a very small three bet. Had he made this larger, I'd probably just shove on him because he's not actually super deep stacked. Uh, but since he makes it kind of really small, we're just going to go up to... I am going to be 4-betting. I just... I guess make it 18. And then, of course, stack off. Really? Okay, yeah. So, welcome to the Komodo Gets Ace King show, where I just get Ace King over and over and over again and try to win money with it. Pocket Jacks is getting at least a little bit of action. Uh, the button seems to be a casual player. I'm gonna give him the fish bones there. A uh, 3 5 bet jam is a reg. I'm going to be starting this one with a check, very likely a check call. Uh, though it's a lot more likely I'll go for a check call against uh, Tammy than against 3-5 bet jam. And actually once there's the bet and a call, I'm just going to fold. I think it's just a little bit too likely that one of the two players has me drawing to two outs. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Interesting raise size. I will be folding my queen 10 quite happily to that. We got a limper here. Uh, I'll, I'll try not to mark too many players because I have a feeling it gets annoying popping up on screen like that all the time. But I, I do give out those fish ones basically any time I see a player with less than uh Less than a full stack, and you know, 30 big blinds definitely qualifies for that. I get led into for a min bet. I will be raising this, uh, I guess, to six. And facing any other action, um, I'll just be folding. <laughs> so, so 11 Jude 
clearly he wants to get his stack in. He that's the guy who shoved against uh, the button open the previous hand as well. Even though I've seen him do it a couple times, I don't think I'm willing to call it off with a uh, middle pair, no kicker on the coordinated board there. Uh, but what I am going to do is if I get into spots where he has a fairly, or I have a fairly strong hand, uh, I'm much more likely to just check it to him to get him to shove uh, rather than see betting it myself. Sevens will just be check folding on this board. Uh, very occasionally, uh, we'll actually check down and get to showdown uh, versus hands like uh, six to through deuces. And the same result will also happen, you know, if we're up against eights or nines, uh, but of course we don't beat those ones. And no longer beating sixes. Just check it one more time. We also occasionally get showdown against ace high, which is nice. And pocket sevens are good. That's lovely. Let's try to see. And deuces. Yeah, okay. Uh, 5-10 against a min-raise. We're going to fold that one. Uh, there is a min-raise. I'm actually getting a pretty good price here. I'm going to flat with, uh, with, with jack 9. And that doesn't really turn into anything, unfortunately. Oh, scratch that combo draw. Uh, so when it checks round on this board, I am going to lead out. And very likely double barrel. Uh, hopefully the ew ew. Okay. Okay. So we get to the river against two players. Now, now you know the thing that comes up is on the river. If I want to continue bluffing, I have to bluff into two players rather than just one. So the odds that my bluff actually gets through are going to go down significantly. Uh, I also have an unknown player with a half stack here who might just be on the passive side and might show up with some strong hands. Uh, I think had there just been one call, I bluff river, but into two, I'm going to slow down. Uh, not the most pleasant situations with the tens. I get raised after c betting. Uh, but tens are a strong enough hand that it will be continuing. I don't expect him to have any over cards or sorry over pairs uh, bigger than tens. So basically, what we're afraid of here is sets seven six suited and very occasionally maybe something like four five suited. And when he checks back, I'm going to throw in a small bet for value. Uh, I think this is a play that some people can take with uh, hands like a seven or hands like, uh, you know, pocket eights, pocket nines, even. Uh, I'm going to bet under half pot, uh, maybe 16 here. I think that's a sizing that will get called quite a bit. Perfect. So I decide to check back my queen 10. And I will be calling on the turn. He decides to check it to me on the river. I don't think my pair has very much showdown value. I just third pair, and of course, you know, there's four spades out there. Uh, so when checked to on this river, I'm going to bluff, and I'm going to bluff large. Uh, I really want to. I want to discourage him from you know hero calling with some sort of an ace. Uh, and I even might be able to get him to fold some mid spades. You know, if he shows up to the river with uh, something, for example, like ace eight offsuit with the eight of spades, I think I can get that to fold for a large size. So 
It's important to notice when playing these uh, snap games, it's important to notice raise sizes coming out of players uh, because I, I find it very easy for me to just kind of, you know, maybe autopilot a little and see that middle position has raised uh, and just snap fold my big blind, which I'm still doing there, even though I was getting, you know, pretty good odds. But it's important to look at the raise sizing because there should be a difference in your defending range whether somebody min raises from middle position or whether somebody 3x's. So it's all it's important to just take that extra, you know, half a second and make sure you're not just folding too often. So yeah, led into by Beartooth44. Um, essentially on this board, what I'm worried about is, you know, slight over pairs, like eights, I guess. I tend not to give these, uh, these donk leads very much credit, so I will be raising this one as well. If he had a seven, I would actually expect him to lead out again. Uh, I guess he could have a six. I don't know what kind of sixes he gets here with. Uh, but given that he called the flop, it actually continued. Uh, I'm not going to be bluffing the turn. And now we get to this river and... very likely doesn't have a seven. Maybe he has a six. I'm gonna throw in a bet here. We're gonna go for 17 on the ace. I think if he ever has any pair other than, you know, a seven or six, which, you know, I guess technically is a full house. If he has any of those, then we get them to fold. Uh, that also has the added benefit of getting him to fold chops. Now, I was playing the board there, and anytime he has something like, for example, 8-9, uh, we'd be chopping. And that's not really something, you know, I'd like to do if I can avoid it at all. I'd rather just win the pot entirely myself. We see a limper from middle position. Uh, I have queen 3 in the small blind. I decide that's good enough to call, but I don't particularly want to raise it out of position. I would very happily be raising it in position. When he pots the flop, I'm actually just going to fold. Oh, that is just beautiful with the ace deuce. Okay, so we flop a monster hand. Uh, I'm going to start this one off with a fairly small bet. Uh, it's a pretty dry texture, king deuce deuce. So a small bet will very often get the job done as a bluff and want to be consistent with that for value hands as well. Okay, so there's of course no HUD in these games, but if memory serves me right, this player is uh, pretty loosey-goosey. Uh, so I am going to defend my a6. Do I have a note on this guy? Yeah, that is exactly the guy I think he is. Uh, so, so I'm not going to try to bluff him very liberally. Uh, he's the type of guy who will definitely call uh, any club here and very likely uh, some of his better pairs as well. If he has nothing, uh, then my ace high is likely to win. Uh, and if he has something, then he's unlikely to fold. He ends up with three of a kind on the river. Uh, I think we have we definitely have very little fold equity against that hand. Uh, King 10 of diamonds on this board, I think is just going to be a check fold. 
there are very, very few hands that I want to, or sorry, there's very few cards that I actually want to see and am very comfortable with on the turn. Uh, but after he checks back flop, I think it's pretty unlikely that he has a strong spade, so I'm going to start bluffing. And I am going to double barrel uh, for a larger sizing uh, because I really want at least the chance of him folding something like, you know, 10 of spades here. So we're going to go 1262. Uh, so a6 defends against a cutoff min raise. Ew. Ew. Okay. Uh, I got raised. I was bluffing. My options are jam or fold, and I think jam is just crazy. So nice hand, sir. I'm going to be folding. With the a6, I have a small amount of showdown value. Uh, when he checks back, his range should be quite capped, but can still include some pretty strong hands uh, like kings and eights, maybe a uh, middling pair like tens. And since, since basically no draws came in there uh, on the turn, meaning he's not going to be capped to not having any sort of straight or flush in, the, in those types of situations, you know, pairs increase in value a lot when there's no straights or flushes out there. Uh, I'm not going to try to bluff him too liberally, which means the a6 is just going to be on the check fold plan. Uh, that's a pretty wonderful flop. With the a7, can start this one off with a check raise. Uh, if it's a rainbow board, I'm very likely just going for a check call uh, and using this as you know uh, a strong bluff catcher on the ace high board. Uh, the raise doesn't even need to be all that big. I guess we go to 11, which is slightly more than 3x's raise. Uh, the 3 brings in 6-4, uh, which I would assume that Call Me Dolly has in his range, but he is on the tighter side. We're going to go 18-88. On eight eight eight. And so the four straight comes in. There should be very few fours in his range. Hmm. There should be very few, but not zero. Like any four with a uh, diamond, any ace four, uh, six four, five four, stuff like that. Uh, if he opens three four, it's definitely in there. Uh, I, I will call. I, I don't check this river intending to check fold it. I'm giving him the opportunity to bluff. Yay, pick him off. So with the king nine, I would usually see bet this board, but we see that Tammy only has nine big blinds left. So I wanted to check back and just let them, let them put in the money with, you know, whatever they feel the need to. When they bet on the turn, I'm just going to raise. 
for the last five dollars anytime he has king queen nine ten jack probably even three i think i'm getting action there ace five is going to start off with a raise uh, over a couple of limpers here and i get called twice flop the nut flush draw oh, that's awesome I'll be starting off with uh, 11 into 15. And that's enough flush. Given that I'm out of position here, I think the best play is just going to be bet bet and hope to get called down by something. Uh, I can bet 20 on the turn. That leaves 40 on the river. I think that's fine. As long as you bet sizings that get all his money in, it's really hard to go wrong. And he ends up shoving with the jack. Ooh, I completed a challenge. That's fun. And a level right on. 888 just switched up. I, I think it's even today they just switched up their uh, VIP program uh, for a challenge-based thing. So look forward to kind of seeing what, what that's all about. So I overcall ace eight in the big blind uh, against two players here, and I do hit top pair. When I overcall a hand like this, it's not necessarily always to hit top pair, uh, but you know more to hit strong draws. I'm going to play this hand uh, essentially as a bluff catcher. Uh, so checking, I guess flop is a standard check turn. I could consider leading. And if it checks around on the turn, I will almost definitely be leading the river. And uh, yeah, that's that's going to be a card I lead. I think I probably want to use a smaller sizing here, maybe. It's half pot, four, four, nine. Let's go five. Five dollars. I think this is definitely a, a sizing that gets called by a jack. And you guys just saw me open very loose in the in the small blind this past hand. Uh, no, it's not showing the right hand. I think it was like jack three offsuit. Uh, if anybody's wondering about that is just anytime you see this purple tag on a player, uh, that's basically somebody I've marked as a nit. I think they're going to be extremely tight. Uh, so I'll be raising their blinds uh, a lot more liberally. Uh, next little lead by 3 of 5 at Jam. He is uh, regging these games. I would expect this to be pretty strong. Uh, so I'm going to just be folding my bottom pair. It's also a board that connects with his range pretty well. Uh, he should have a lot of straights, a lot of two pairs, a lot of sets. Okay, so we have small min raise from a very splashy player. Uh, I'm going to three bet him slightly larger than I normally would. Uh, essentially, I expect him to come along a lot looser than most players would. I recall one hand I played against the guy. I believe I threw in a three bet against his raise pre-flop, and he continued with nine do suited. So when he actually folds there, I'm not really sure what he has. but clearly something worse than 9-do suited. Uh, Overcall the big blind with pocket 7s. And when cut off decides to bet here, I think it just does have to be a fold.
I flop middle pair, I definitely want to continue with this hand, so it'll either be a bet or a check call. Given how loose this player is playing, I do think that a second pair uh, nut kicker is going to be good enough to go for value there. And I'm also going to start off with a pretty big bet against Beartooth44. Okay, so queen, queen, five board. I'm always a little conflicted about these ones uh, because I do see a lot of value in checking back and bluff catching. Uh, but on these very low pairs, I think that protecting against uh, overcards is quite important. And it's you know still very likely that I do have the best hand here. So I'm just going to start off with a small half pot bet. Uh, if I get called, basically on any turn, I'm very likely checking back. And interesting, four-way pot, um, flush draw on board. Other than that, the, the flop is pretty dry. I flop up a gut shot, and the big blind decides to lead. Uh, I have to believe that when he leads into three people, his range is going to be stronger than normal. Uh, I also raised a hand that this player led. Uh, earlier in the video, if you guys recall, the 766 flop, and uh, he did not fold to the raise, so that uh, is another point against trying to raise. I'm going to check back and attempt to realize my equity uh, on the turn, and he checks river. I'll be surprised if he shows up with much worse than a king here. I think if he does have a lot of hands worse than a king, then I should be bluffing my hand on the river, but I don't quite think that's the case. And of course he does, and it is an incredibly weird spot to show up with pocket eights. I'm going to be throwing in a 3-bet against the eight against the type player with an 8-9. Uh, ooh, fun flop. Uh, I don't think this is a board I want to be checking on a lot, so I'm going to be starting off with a bet. I, I've been trying out a lot more one-third pot bets lately, so we're going to try with that. And you see, even there, he, he folded to the $6 bet in 18, and that, that's kind of why these bets are so ridiculously effective because you risk so little. Uh, but in a lot of cases, you you still get a lot done with the bet. And by betting small like that, it just lets you bet more and more of your range. Uh, King five is a little loose, but we have a tight big blind. So we'll open it up. Now, I don't know anything about this player. Eight nine doesn't really improve on too many turns, but I think it's enough to start betting. We should have some fold equity here. I have blockers to pocket eights and pocket nines, which could potentially be significant depending on what exactly his range looks like.
true story bets less than a third pot and once again th this tiny bet is like it's feeling pretty effective i will be i will be calling this if i had king three here so uh no gut shot to the wheel i think i would just have to be folding And against a 40 big blind stack, I'm going to 3-bet jacks, and if he shoves, I'll call it off. With just under 18 in the pot and 31 left, I'm not going to be folding. But I'm going to start off with a check and let him bet. And just make him put in his last 17. Hopefully he doesn't have a queen or better. And unfortunately we're drawing pretty thin. Ooh, full house on the river, though. Does that count for anything now? Okay. Ooh, whoops. 888 has this little glitch on it where occasionally... If it needs to top you up, instead of topping you up, it'll sit you out. And a pocket tens against the UK for 40 blinds, I think it's just a ship. Oh, we are, we are not doing well against this guy today. Oh, one out on the river. I guess we had some outs to chop. That's okay, I think 10 is a strong enough hand to go with there. The other option is just flat, uh, the raise with pocket 10s. But then you get into a very similar situation as the pocket jacks uh, a few hands ago where there's $30 left and about $20 in the pot so it'll be very, very hard to actually uh, not get money in. So I get a three bet. It's a very small three bet by Beartooth here. Uh, we're 150 blinds deep, so I definitely don't want to get Ace King all in preflop. Uh, so I'm just going to start off with a flat. It's interesting that True Story snap folded there, uh, because to that sizing, um, I don't think he should have been folding much of his range. And I have no idea if Beartooth is the type of guy to really balance his uh, checking ranges. Uh, I have plenty of options here. I can check back. I can start to bet. Because this is a jack in 8 board, uh, and I'll typically have a nice advantage, I am going to start off with a bet. We're going to start off with 1580. If I get check raised, uh, I'm not thrilled about it, but given that I expect his check raising range to be pretty tight, um, bluffs, you know, at minimum, like ace high flush draw, and, you know, value hands, well, I guess over pairs better than. Uh, we're not doing incredibly well against that, and I'm going to continue with a turn bet on this four straight card and very likely jam the river. Because if you think about a three betting range, um, especially out of the big blind, the, the big blind is, it, it's kind of an oddball because you're often closing the action. So it's very, very, very easy to just flat and then see a flop. So I tend to think I, players are, are more polarized when three betting out of the big blind. And in a polarized three betting range, I really don't expect to see many nines at all. And when he goes for a check on that flop I, and doesn't check raise, I'd discount stuff like sets as well. Uh, so he should be doing quite poorly. Uh, guys, sets are nice. Uh, I'm just going to go bet, bet, bet with the set. Should have one combo of Queen Jack suited. This is actually an interesting spot to go for a 
check raise, and I think that's what I'm going to do. On a non-queen, I think I go bet, bet, bet there. But since he can have a whole bunch of king-queen, he can have queen-10, I uh, can potentially have ace-queen depending on how he plays it preflop. And if you consider the fact that maybe he's not calling me down three streets with a jack, uh, so there's less value in triple barreling, and we also let him uh, bet stuff like king-10, uh, then all of a sudden checking looks, looks pretty decent. And... Uh, I'm just going to look up what he had here just for fun. And he had a jack-10 offsuit. So potentially missing the value against that exact hand. Uh, whether or not he would have called it down on the river, um, I don't know. I, I would tend to think he wouldn't on the paired queen. playing a 10-9. Looks like folds around to the big blind. And jack-6 is going to be one of my three bet bluffs here against Sir Underhill. Uh, he should not have too many hands that connect with his board uh, in his range other than sets and stuff like jack-10, queen-10. Uh, you know, if he has a reasonably tight continuing range preflop, uh, I block jack-10, which works in my favor, uh, so I am actually going to start with a $10 bet. And expect to get folds a reasonable amount of the time. And of course I don't. Uh, when the 9 pairs, uh, the board texture basically does not change at all, so most hands that called on the flop should likely be calling on the turn. Uh, I guess the exception of that to that is ace high hands that would be calling flop folding the turn. But I don't know if those account for enough of his range to uh, to justify just barreling off there. And on the river, jack high has to either raise or fold, and I think folding is going to be the best option. Plop a gut shot with the 6-7. I will be throwing in a bet on this board. And 9-10 is not an incredible uh, hand, but the odds are pretty good, so I will be continuing. And every once in a while you flop straight. I'll be starting off with a check raise here. Uh -oh. Sizing wise, probably got to make it pretty big, like 25. Uh, because there's another player involved. It's also a very coordinated board, so I don't want to make it too small. I'm going to start off with flat with the 7-8. I want to play a lot with the big blind. I also want to play with the small blind, but he's been taking more of just like a three better fold approach in a lot of situations pre-flop, just kind of playing tight. Uh, so I don't necessarily expect too much action from him. Uh, start off with a check back with the 7-8. If he checks to me several times, I can start betting. And guys, it's uh, it's been about oh, 45 minutes here, so I think I'm going to play out this king-queen and then wrap the video up. We're up against a loosey-goosey player here one more time. Uh, 
I think I still get value from a lot of his hands by betting flop, but I think uh, that gets me into a situation that I don't necessarily want to be in, uh, whereas suddenly we have a larger uh, pot than I want, where I have a medium strength hand. But I have no intention of folding this on a lot of rivers, so let's go for the call. That's potentially one of the rivers I fold on. Uh, we'll see what he decides to do. If he checks, I just check back. And he decides to bet 1750, which is less than half pot, guys. Uh, I really expect this to be something like a one pair ace. Unfortunately, this is a player that I think even if I jam on him on the river, if I jam on him on the river, I really don't get him to fold an ace. Uh, so I guess my play is going to be fold the river, even though I'm not extraordinarily happy about it. Okay. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the video. Guys, thanks so much for watching. As usual, uh, make sure to rate the video, leave comments below. Uh, I'll definitely be around to answer any questions uh, if you guys have them. Uh, once again, this has been Darius Komodo Dragon Jesus Vita for Poker VIP. See you next time, guys.